Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. I'm ready to talk about a book. Me too. <laughs> what book did we read? We read The Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman, published in 1997. You sound like one of those um, books on tape where at the very beginning before, you know, the, the reader starts telling the story, they're like, this is Harry Potter. And blah, 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 blah. That's exactly what you just sounded like. I liked it. It was good. Well, I have two <laughs> things to say about that, possibly. <laughs> One is that um, last night I actually went to a live taping of a podcast called The Adventure Zone, which is a family that plays Dungeons and Dragons together. <laughs> uh, and that was up in Boston. And when I went back to get my car, I discovered that the parking garage I had parked in was closed. Oh, fuck. <laughs> So, um, I stayed there overnight and, uh, drove back this morning and, um, to allow myself to finish reading the book again, before we talked about it, I ended up getting it on audio tape. And so I've actually been listening it on audiobook. So there may be an influence there. Oh, I'm excited. Cause then now you can tell me how to pronounce everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can try. And then the other the other aspect of that, well, okay, as someone who shares a house with a young human child, uh, I know that you are familiar with being very, very tired. Yes. And I don't know if this is an experience that other people have or if it's just me, but often when I'm very tired, um, random songs just get stuck in my head. Really? Like what? Well, today it was uh, the theme from the Adams Family movie. Uh, which I believe is by MC Hammer. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, actually. I wish I didn't know that. Yeah. So if someone were to be listening to this podcast for the first time, um, they might think that it's about earworms and, th and movie songs. <laughs> be wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That wouldn't be a completely inaccurate idea. Uh, but how would you describe what this podcast is actually about? It is about... Two people who don't get to see each other very much who are using young adult books as an excuse to talk about their personal lives. Yes. And why do we talk about young adult books? Because I like them. Do you like them or do you love them? I may love them. I may love them like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> How is that? Is that as dorky <laughs> as humanly possible? Well, you know, as long as you don't have uh, the Adams fam Family rap song. And stuck in your head. I think you're doing okay. Yeah, I need to double check to make sure that that is, in fact, MC um, Hammer. Let's see. All right. Googling. Oh, yeah, it definitely is. It is the Adams Family Groove artist, MC Hammer, album, Too Legit to Quit. Oh, well, there you go. <sighs> you know, <laughs> and the thing about getting that, so I feel like there's... <laughs> Not to spend too much time on this, but I feel like there's a sort of a scale of tiredness and the kind of song that gets stuck in your head. Like, you know, on the low end, like, you know, if, if we were to rate a song a one, maybe it's a song that you hear a fair amount that's pretty catchy, like, you know, Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash or I don't know. Really, what. any recent pop song. Yeah, that would be good. They're not great. I don't love them. But, you know, if I hear it, I, I may you know, want to shake it off, shake it off. <laughs> yes. And then at like 10 is a song that you heard once or twice, 30 years ago in the soundtrack to a movie. And that's, yeah. so that's where I am. Congratulations. That's a, that's a tough place to be. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, so, um, we talk about books. We're talking about the subtle knife today. Uh, we're going to spoil the hell out of it and we're going to swear a lot probably. And, um, so just be aware of that going forward. And then next week, not next week, next time, next episode, <laughs> next time, uh, we're going to talk about, I think, um, a book that I don't believe Carrie ha that you have read called The Haters by Jesse Andrews, which was published this year. Yeah, I'm actually really excited about that because I've read one of uh, Jesse Andrews' other books, um, which I believe was made into a movie, um, which was me, Earl and the Dying Girl. Mm -hmm. And um, I liked it. So I'm excited to check this one out. Yeah, I thought it, uh, I thought it was really funny. 
and uh, I, I think you will enjoy it also. So, and it's got to be a, a nice change of pace from reading his dark materials, which you know, while I love these books and I love them, you know, down to the down to my core. Oh, they can be rough. Yeah. So, shall we get into it? I think we shall. I was thinking we could do a sort of uh, last time on his dark materials. So, how did things end in um, a golden compass? Golden compass ended with Lord Azriel busting a hole into another world and Lyra saying, y'all motherfuckers are crazy, peace out, and going in. Here's what I wanted to read. It, it was just, uh, okay. This was uh, after Lord Azriel used Roger uh, to create the door between the two worlds. She was still holding Roger's body. Pantalimon was saying something for her. Her mind was ablaze, and she didn't hear until he pressed his wild cat claws into the back of her head to make her. She blinked. What? What? Dust, he said. What are you talking about? Dust. He's going to find the source of dust and destroy it, isn't he? That's what he said. And the oblation board, and the church, and Bolvanger, and Mrs. Coulter, and all. They want to destroy it too, don't they? Yeah, or stop it affecting people. Why? Because if they think dust is bad, it must be good. She didn't speak. A little hiccup of excitement leapt in her chest. Pentelibon went on. We've heard them all talk about the dust, and they're so afraid of it. And you know what? We believed them. Even though we could see that what they were doing was wicked and evil and wrong, we thought dust must be bad, too. Because they were grown up and they said so. But what if it isn't? What if it's, she said breathlessly, yeah. What if it's really good? Yeah, Lyra basically says uh, everyone can go fuck themselves. And uh, I'm going to find out what this uh, dust business is and protect it as much as I can. Mm -hmm. So this this new book starts with a completely new character. So I like Will a lot. I love Will. Will is good people. Like one of the big strengths of the first book is that Lila, Lyra is such a great character. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Will is a big strength of the second book. that, um, And that he's like a really interesting character and also completely distinct from Lyra. Yeah, he's nothing like her at all. Besides the fact that, you know... He's strong and brave like she is, but he's had his own troubles. Um, and he's sort of off in his own direction where he's like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Uh, I'm going to go find my dad. Right. And part of uh, part of Lyra's um, development in, in this book is that she realizes that like she's in some ways not the center of this this part of the story and that her main task is to help Will with his... I don't know, Quest doesn't seem like quite the right word, but to help him find his dad. Yeah, and, and one thing I really liked is, you know, in the first book, she was sort of figuring out how to use the golden compass. And in this book, she's like, I'm going to use it when I need it, but I'm going to be mature enough to not pry. Mm -hmm. And I really liked that, that like flip in her where she's like, I don't need to know everything. And I'm not going to just look into your life because I can because that's fucking creepy. Yeah. And she waited for him to, to tell her all about, you know, what happened with his dad, you know, why he's going to look for him, his mother, which is all, um, you know, his dad was an explorer who went to the north, which is very convenient since that's where the whole first book took place. Um, so he, he disappeared he sent his um, wife and child some letters all about his exploration and then was never heard from again. Dun, dun, dun. Mystery. Mystery and intrigue. So Lyra could have looked at all that shit. She could have just looked at her little compass and been like, what the fuck is going on? And it would have said the whole story. But she was like, no, I'm going to hang back because I think that's what the compass wants me to do. And she just listened. And I liked that. Growing up. Everybody sucks. Sure. In this book, like, everybody's horrible except for Lyra mm -hmm. and um, Will. 
the boy that she meets in the other world, which is much like ours. Will and Myra, they're pretty cool. Yeah. Everyone else blows. Like everybody in his world besides him and his mom and the old lady who used to teach him piano, they suck. Well, how about Dr. Malone? I like Dr. Malone okay. Okay, Dr. Malone's good. So, okay, three people, four people that don't suck. But then he's like, oh, yeah, kids, totally horrible, adults, the worst, everybody's horrible. Yes. So Dr. Malone um, is a former nun mm -hmm. who is now um, a full-time scientist studying dark matter which is our world's version of dust. Yeah. And um, the Golden Compass sort of directs Lyra to her, and she protects Lyra as best she can. Um, and, you know, things haven't ended with her because she just made it into um, another world. She went in through the tent and, and through the seam between the two worlds so we're going to see her again but um yeah she's actually not bad either yeah her research partner i think like he's not a terrible person but he doesn't know what's i mean he wasn't there he doesn't know lyra he doesn't know the story and he's and also he's pretty self-interested he's self-interested he's like oh shit there's gonna be money Hell yeah. I don't want my project to get shut down. He sees this as an opportunity, whereas, you know, the former nun sees something different. She sees a girl who's clearly in trouble, who's able to tell her things about herself that no one would know. Um, and and she, she feels like this, this girl is not lying to her. Um, so there's something going on. And why are these people so interested in my research all of a sudden? Right. And beyond that, she just has no interest in going to work for, um, it's not the Defense Department, but whatever the br British equivalent of that is. Yeah, because she doesn't want to build a weapon. Right. Uh, and I think, like, I think about the parts of the books that I like the best. And all the, you know, all the stuff with uh, Will and Lyra, of course, like those those characters are great but then also like you know if you said uh, okay and then there's also going to be kind of a subplot that's about um these two physics researchers trying to get funding for their research into dark matter i wouldn't necessarily have picked that to be one that would uh, well actually you know what to be fair i you probably would say you would have yeah <laughs> you'd be like oh yeah that, that'll be one that's right up jake's alley <laughs> anyway uh, i like that that whole thing a lot a lot of the other stuff you know like a lot of characters are introduced and given long incomprehensible names and then get killed off yeah. <laughs> and all that stuff was not as interesting to me if i had a list of all the people in the book I'm like eh, i'd remember five maybe six of them mm -hmm. anyway yeah um and so there's <laughs> I'm so loopy. All right. <laughs> this is going to be a fun episode, I can tell. It's just, I don't know. I'm just jumping all over the place. So, Me too. So his dad, uh, who's John Perry, mm -hmm. turns out to be this character in Lyra's world called Stanislas Grumman. Yes. So Grumman slash Perry ends up uh, connecting with Lee Scoresby. Who I also love. Yeah, he's uh, he's the Texan from the first book, mm -hmm. uh, and he owns a a hot air balloon, so he's kind of a cowboy type character, and so they connect. And there were two situations in their sort of combined story where something was kind of set up early on, which then didn't really pay off. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know what. So Grumman. Um, has a, a heart condition and he knows that he's not, you know, he's basically says that he can't do anything too strenuous or he'll, his heart will give out and he knows he's not going to live long. And so kind of my expectation is that he would, you know, that would ha be how he died. Um, but instead he, he is killed by a witch. But she shoots him in the heart. Oh, you know what? 
You're really smart, Carrie. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad that we do a podcast together. (laughs) Yeah, she she puts an arrow right through his heart. Yeah. So, mic drop. I'm awesome. You are awesome. (laughs) And then uh, Lee Scoresby is given a flower that he can use to summon the witches, Mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, again seemed like one of those things that he would actually do at some point but uh i'm not and i mean i guess he does but not in time he does just too late yeah just like seconds before he dies the thing is he hadn't thought about it he 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 was too busy doing his thing and then his his demon says to him yo lee you know you got that flower right he's like fuck yeah i got that flower and dies right so, I mean, it's motivated that he, he doesn't think of it. Like, he's clearly in the middle of a lot of stuff, having to kill 25 people with 30 bullets and all. Wow. Uh, but um, it's just, I just thought it was kind of interesting that he's given the flower early on, but then it doesn't really end up having a very direct impact on the plot. Well, it, it does in that it gets um, Serafina. It gets the wit- Serafina away from the, the group of people. So one witch is, is killing John Perry. Right. And one witch is checking on Lee Scoresby. So that means that those two witches are not taking care of the group of uh, other people, Lyra and Will and everybody. Right. So then Will is alone when he meets up with his father. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's true. All right. I withdraw that <laughs> that whole thing. <laughs> no, it was it was it was good. It was good. I like it. It was fine. Yeah. So guess who 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 would you think would play Lee Scoresby in a movie? Well, you know, I mean <laughs> Apart from the fact that he's dead, I thought maybe John Wayne. <laughs> well, that's not bad. Do you know who played him in... Because they... I mean, they actually did make a movie of the first one. Right. Yes. I, I recall that the, the bear's noses were not up to snuff in it. No, they were not up to snuff from what someone told me. No, Sam Elliott, oh. which is actually pre- pretty perfect. Yeah, that's great. I like Sam Elliott and I like yeah. Lee Scoresby, so that works perfectly. So I couldn't read the book you know now because i you know first read them before i'd ever seen the movie obviously but yeah. now i i can't not picture him and i don't really picture any of the other actors any of the other anything in the books you know i don't see you know what's her name as um, mrs coulter i don't see any of that shit yeah but i can't not see sam elliott <laughs> at least scoresby so there are three worlds in this book. There's Lyra's world. Yeah. There's Will's world. Mm-hmm. And then there's a crossroads world. Yes. That world sucks. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, um, let's see. Uh, Shite, no, that's not right. Shitagatse. Something like that. Yeah. It's the city of, what, scavengers? or the uh, Magpies. Magpies. That's the one. So Chitagatse. It's a city of magpies, and that place is balls shitty. Yeah, it's... Um, I mean, if you're over 13. Did you ever read, uh, well, um, the Stephen King, uh, The Gunslinger, I think it's called? I did. Some things about this book reminded me of that. I mean, it's like, because there's a, in the in that book... Or maybe in that series, I don't. Maybe it's not in the first book, but he goes through a door to another world, and it's completely abandoned. Mm-hmm. And just how creepy and spooky that is to come across a city that is completely abandoned, um, and not to know exactly why or what's going on. And it was recently abandoned too, because the food in the fridge wasn't bad. Right. Yeah. It had been like abandoned just a few days previously, which I guess checks out because. It turns out to be indirectly the result of... Lord Azriel's dumb fuckery? Yes, correct. It also kind of it reminds me of like those stories of people finding, you know, ships on the sea that are where all the light boats are gone, and but everything seems to be in order, and there's just, you know, half-eaten food abandoned on the, on the dinner table and stuff like that. Like, it's just a really creepy thing. Super creepy. Although for Will, Will thinks it's great at first. Yeah. Because basically everyone is a threat 
is a, at least a potential threat to Will. Yeah, so he can actually sleep, which he has not really been able to do because he's been on the lam yeah. from the people who were trying to get those letters that his dad sent to his mom. Mm -hmm. And his cat, being a good cat, tripped one of them on the stairs and he fell and died. So Will went a-running and ended up following a, another cat. He's got a lot of cats in his life through a, the portal into um, shitty land. Yeah, and, you know, I can only assume that Phil, Philip Pullman really likes cats uh, because the way that he shows that the that the kids in this new land are terrible is they attack a cat. They do, and I hate them. Yeah. Because you don't fucking do that no, shit. No, that's not allowed. You be nice to cats. You pet them. You pet them. You pet them gentle. You do not attack them. You're not an asshole. So Will and cats are BFFs. Right. Um, and Lyra says that the cat, she says that, I think twice, that she almost thought that the cat was Will's demon. I wonder if that's a spoiler alert. Oh, I don't know. Is it? I don't remember the last book at all. It is. Okay. His demon's totally a cat. Sweet. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's one thing I really think is interesting about this, these books that, okay, so when Lyra goes into worlds that don't have demons, she keeps her demon. Yes. But when other people go into worlds that do have demons, they get demons. Right. So no matter what, you get a demon. Yeah. If you leave the world, do you... No, you keep your demon still. You keep your demon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Lyra kept her demon. Right. But even John Perry, when he went to um, Chittagaze, uh, he kept his eagle or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. He kept the eagle. So I think everyone should go over to Lyra's world, get a demon, and then skip back. And then you find out. What kind of a person you are. Yeah, what if I have the world's worst demon? What if mine is like a banana slug? You know, oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> I am not kidding. I think that's horrible. Anyway. So you, the uh, demon it has to be the, or it doesn't have to be, but it's usually the opposite sex from the person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So what do you think? Not a banana slug, I hope. You know, it's probably in my personal opinion uh because i am a crazy cat lady mine is probably a cat uh -huh. not a pinacorn not a pinacorn as much as i would like that um i think it's probably going to be a cat all right probably a big dumb boy cat obviously if um it has to be opposite sex from me sure what would yours be uh i don't know i just, maybe a tape here that would be awesome how heavy are they uh, I mean, I think they're pretty heavy, but... You could get, like, a special backpack for it or something? Well... Because a lot of people seem to either carry their demons or their demons, if they're dogs, they're, you know, obviously walking next to them. So I guess it would be more like a dog demon where it just kind of trot around behind you. Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Okay. I just like the idea of the cat. I can just, like, pl plop it on my shoulder and... Do what I got to do. Yeah. I like that we sort of have come up with these other personas. Like we had the, we had our robot names and now we've got our demons. Yeah. I just sort of assume that I would have a cat maybe because I've just got so many cats in my life. Sure. But um, who knows? I mean, maybe I don't actually have it. Like my personality isn't cat. It just so happens to be what I have. And I would have this like badass elephant or something. Yeah, the demons seem to be pretty small, generally. Like, they tend to be. Either they're fairly small, or they can fly. Yeah. I mean, not that things that fly aren't small, but, you know. I think the biggest one that I've, I've heard of is the, um, the Labrador Retrievers that the, um, the butlers have. Right. Those are the biggest. Yeah. One thing that I thought was kind of interesting which I don't know if it's spelled out exactly, but it seems like, um, like there's a word for pet in, on Lyra's world, mm -hmm. but it seems like it's weird to have one. Why would you pet a pet if you can pet your demon? Yeah, I guess that's it. I don't know. 
I think, yeah, I think she was saying, like, there are animals that do stuff, but... Right, like they have cats to keep down the mice and things like that. Mm Mm-hmm. And horses. Yeah. But I don't know if they, I don't know if they've actually got pets, because that would be weird. Your, your demon would be fucking jealous. That's, yeah. So anyway, we haven't actually talked at all about the subtle knife. We sure haven't. And that's the whole title of the book. It is. That's that's what this book is about. Even though this book is really just about... There's one thing I, I like and dislike about this book is that it's all about the, the traveling. Mm-hmm. It's The whole thing is, is getting to Lord Asriel. Right. So the whole book is like walking and flying and walking some more and going between worlds. So that part of the book, I'm just like, oh, Jesus Christ. It's that long part of the, the Hobbit movies where it's just the Hobbits walking across New Zealand. And you're like, Jesus goddamn Christ, are they ever going to find something? Nope, they're still walking. So that's the one thing I don't like about it. But what I do like about it is that it sets up a lot of really cool stuff. It gives us the subtle knife, which is um, as important um, – as Lyra's um, alethiometer as a magical instrument that does cool shit. What does it do, Jacob? Tell me. The subtle knife? Yeah, tell me what it does. Apparently it does on any number of things. But uh, the main things that we see it do is it can cut through anything. Including fingers. Yes. Um, and also it can, you know, well, I guess as an extension of that, it can cut between dimensions or between worlds so if you find the exact right spot you can slice it through the air and it opens a door to another world Uh, and really the only thing that we see that happen is between will's world and um the the crappy world that where all the specters live but presumably you can also use it to get to other worlds as well we just don't see that happen in this book yeah um and then the third thing that apparently can do is kill god that's what i hear but you have to be the knife bearer to do this right right like not anybody can get between worlds you have to be the knife bearer is that correct yes so the knife chooses who the bearer is by Slicing off a couple of fingers. Yeah, it seems unnecessary. You'd think there'd be something else, like maybe it could glow. Maybe it could, you know, do something else where it's like, oh, you feel magical vibrations. Like it is like when you're getting your your wand in Harry Potter. Like, oh, this is obviously right. But now cuts off a couple of fingers. Maybe it has a little digital readout that says, yep, it's you. Oh, a digital readout? Sure, why not? Anyway. What? <laughs> I'm just thinking of cutting off two fingers as a digital readout. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Hmm. Sorry. Yep, digital, sure. Yeah, worst <laughs> terrible. Just edit that shit out, too. <laughs> nope. Some things I will edit out, but that is not one of them. So Will becomes the, uh, the, the knife bearer and... Uh, has the ability to both switch between worlds and can also close up the worlds behind him, which is really important to do. And he can kill God. There was actually one quote that I really liked. Let me find it. So they had some lead and they started taking it apart with the the subtle knife. He was going to make it into gold and he cut it and cut it smaller and smaller till he came to the smallest piece he could get. There ain't nothing smaller than that. So small you couldn't see it even. But he cut that too. And inside the smallest little bit, there were all the specters packed in, twisted over and folded up so tight that they took up no space at all. But once he cut it, bam, they whooshed out. They'd been here ever since. That's what my papa said. So was Lord Azrael's explosion a nuclear reaction? Because it sounds like, you know, you've got this nothing, 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 and then, boom, all this horrible stuff comes out and it takes people away. I mean, I guess it's analogous, right? Yeah. It's close enough. Right. And his dad makes him promise that he's going to join Lord Asriel 
in his war against God. But they never actually call him God, correct? They call him the authority. I think there's one point where someone says, you know, the authority, you know, God, (laughs) towards the end. You know, just to make sure that everyone knows what we're talking about. And it's kind of interesting. Well, so, right. So there's that whole theological thing, because the general argument seems to be that you judge God by what, I mean, we'll, I'll say his, but whatever, <laughs> <laughs> with the understanding that that's uh, representative of a certain strand of Christianity, which not everyone holds to. I'll put it like that. Okay. All right. So you judge God by what his representatives on earth do, which is to say religious people. And a lo- they do a lot of shitty stuff, um, you know, and engage in oppression. Oh, I wrote down a quote about this, actually. I forget who said this. That is what the church does, and every church the same. Control, destroy, obliterate every good feeling. Mm. Um, and they were talking about... Uh, see, I don't remember who said it, but I do remember that the, the context was like they're talking about how um, Mrs. Coulter had been separating kids from their demons, uh, which was this horrible kind of torture. And then there, whoever was said this was talking about how in other religions, you know, they don't do that exactly, but they might engage in female circumcision or other practices like that, which similarly work to separate people from pleasure or enjoying life. Mm -hmm. So you see that the church does horrible things and therefore you fight not against, not just against the church, but against God uh, himself. Um, So that, you know, you you may or may not buy. Um, Certainly a lot of people, I think, do kind of buy it. and it's it's also interesting to me because that argument is different from another argument which you kind of encounter, which is like uh, people who get become angry at God because of bad things that happen in the world that are just kind of natural events or, or not attributable to any particular church or anything, but you know, some a uh, family member gets sick or just something horrible happens. Um, but that argument isn't one of the ones that's made in the book, I don't think. Instead, it's more about, like, the church is bad and therefore God must be bad. But then the people who are most involved in the fight against God, you know, particularly Lord Asriel. I mean, Lord Asriel uh, shattered the bor- the border between worlds. And, like, I don't know, how many pe- how many people do you think died as a result of that? So many. I mean, well, obviously, because... You know, in in Chittagatsa, you know, all of those specters were um, released. And we didn't actually say what the specters did, but the specters basically suck the souls out of people. Same as the kids who get their, their demons cut away, where they turn into these husks. These people didn't have outside demons, but they weren't killed. They just went numb and so all these people just their lives ended and all these kids didn't have parents anymore because this motherfucker decided that he was gonna go bust some shit apart yeah so i mean you have to figure at least millions if not billions in that world alone and we also know that there are wide ranging effects on presumably every other of the infinite or nearly infinite worlds in the, in the continuum, like Will's world, apparently the something has changed with the magnetic pole, which I don't know if that's going to kill anyone exactly, but, um, and, uh, you know, there's major climate change in, uh, in Lyra's world and everything is just chaos. Yeah, I actually that was one of my notes was um she she mentioned climate change, you know. He said, "Wait, isn't it hot in your world?" and Will said, uh, "Not where I used to live, not normally, but the climate's been changing. The summers are hotter than they used to be." So, 
all this shit is making things go crazy. Yeah. Not to mention that he actually killed a small child <laughs> in order yeah. to do the thing in the first place. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of blood on that guy's hands. But yet they are now tasked to go help him. Right. And and I guess it's kind of setting up a, you know, the, the kind of the representative of organized religion is Mrs. Coulter, who is the most evil person in the world or in any world, perhaps. Yeah, like... At the end of the book, she's practically tenting her fingers and going, well, I guess I got to go kill my daughter now. Yep. Wow. <laughs> You're cool. And she seems super excited about it, too. Yeah, because she finally found out, like, who Eve was. And, oh, it just so happens to be her daughter. Awesome. Even more fun. You know, and then you have Lord Azriel. Uh you know, Mrs. Coulter seems creepier to me, I gotta say. Yeah, she does. I mean, Lord Azriel, I could, I don't know, I could maybe kick back and have a beer with him, but he'd probably piss me off pretty quick. So what does he represent, like, in our world? Is he, you know, the super annoyingly Dawkins character? Maybe. Because as an atheist, I really hate that guy. So I don't know, I don't know, like, you know, we've got the church, we've got religion, we've got the angels, we've got Mrs. Coulter, we've got all of that. So what is Lord Azrael representing? Right. Um, Yeah, I mean, that sort of militant atheism seems like, that's that's sort of what I thought of first, too. But I'm not sure if that's actually the right answer. Mm -hmm. Or if there is a particularly right answer, you know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if Dawkins... Dawkins certainly was around in 97, but I don't... But was he as popular? Was he as well-known, et cetera, et cetera? I mean, he was pretty well-known. Like, he wrote some uh, pretty well-known books, some of which I read, um, which were kind of militantly atheistic. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I don't think that his uh, less... Some of his worst qualities had become quite as evident until you know, this century sometime, Mm -hmm. but I, it may also have been that I just wasn't aware of them or it was the internet wasn't big then. So he couldn't quite make himself as obnoxious on Twitter as he can these days. I don't follow the man, so I don't care. Fair enough. (laughs) But yeah, so, um, so we've got the two sides, um, and shit's going to go down. And so the book ends on this cliffhanger. So I have a question. Uh, so the the dust, Dr. Malone creates a computer which is allowed to talk to it, basically. Yeah. And so it kind of becomes its own character, like that she's able to talk to directly. Yeah. That was cool. So instead of having to look at the, uh, um, the, the golden compass, she had a golden compass that talked. Right. And it also kind of ordered her around. Yep. Told her what to do. But I think the, the Golden Compass actually sort of tells Lyra what to do, too. Right. But, yeah, it was interesting to, to have the dust basically tell her, like, yep, we're watching. Ha-ha. Yep. I was like, oh, fuck, that's creepy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that was what I thought. I was like, I don't know. I kind of like this a lot better when, <laughs> you know, it was basically a Ouija board. Yeah, instead of, like... Hey, dust particles, they're watching you shower. <laughs> like, ooh. Why? <laughs> Why do you do that? <laughs> That's not cool, dust. All right. So is the so the dust Um so is the I'm a little confused about this. So is the dust basically on God's side or is God or See, I thought the dust was original sin or something? Well, that's what the theologians on Lyra's world thought. Yeah. Or it's innocence or it's it's something. Um, but I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't have this answer. Yeah, and then the subtle knife apparently like has some kind of agency to it because it picks it it's uh, you know, the bearer. Like, is that a different thing? Or? I don't know, because the, the um, you would think that if, if it were, it wouldn't pick someone, like, because the, the former bearer said, I'm 
not cool with this because you're kind of young, but uh, that's what the knife wanted. So it seems like while most things dust related tend to be, you know, either or young or old pre or post pubescence, the knife doesn't give a shit. Oh yeah. That's a good point. Because Will is still pre pubescent. Yep. Hmm. So I don't know. Well, food for thought. Anyway. (laughs) Anyway. I don't know. Is there anything else? Well, this book is missing one big thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Bears. Oh, yeah. No, yep. Not a bear to be seen. I was a little bummed about that. I was kind of like waiting like at the end of the book, like suddenly, you know, Yorick comes out and busts some shit open. Mm-hmm. Wait, there are no bears in this book. Like in the first book, Lyra and Yorick's bond is kind of a big thing. And hmm, maybe it would be a little difficult to set up her relationship with Will. I don't know. Maybe. But yeah, nonetheless. Yeah, nonetheless, we just wanted a bear. We want to have bears. And the bears are going to be okay with the specters because they don't have souls, because they don't have demons. So. Well, didn't Lyra think that their soul was their armor, though? I think so, but I think it's different. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe maybe he'll go, well, no, because he's already in Lyra's world. So he. Yeah. it's not like, oh, he can go into Lyra's world and get his demon. No, he's already from there. Damn it. I don't know. There's one more book. Yeah. We'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll definitely uh, read that book and talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm really excited. Sometime. It won't be like the next book because well, obviously we already have that one. Um, but we will read it um, soon-ish because uh, we need to know how the story ends because I completely forgot. I do know that when I finished reading The Amber Spyglass many, many years ago, I was just sitting in my car crying. So we have that to look forward to. Yay. <laughs> you know how much I, I love crying? <sighs> so wonderful. Yeah. So, I mean, putting my cards on the table, I liked the first book a lot better than this one. I did too, for a lot of the, the reasons that I sort of already said that, you know, it's a lot of, it's a lot of middle, you know, middle books have this problem where they're not the first books, so they're not setting everything up. It's not the third book where like, all the action is, is going down. It's like, eh, the second book. The only time this has ever been different is um, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, I was going to use the same example. <laughs> Where the second movie is obviously the best. But for the most part, the, the, the second book is kind of like, mm, it's getting you there. Right. Um, and so the first book is kind of all about... Um, Lyra and her development and at the, and the where it ends up taking her to is this moment where she is at a point where she she feels like she can just reject everything that's been told to her and there isn't really uh, that doesn't happen really in this book so much uh, instead it ends on this kind of cliffhanger where Will has to decide between taking the subtle knife to Lord Asriel or going to try to find Lyra, who's been kidnapped. And so he's being pressured to make a decision by two angels. And that's how the book ends. And we don't know what decision he makes. Although probably we guess. Yeah. He's not going to go anywhere until he finds Lyra. Yeah, he's not a sociopath, unlike (laughs) virtually everyone else in this book. Yeah, I think, you know, there are some people who would probably do the right thing. But not many. And most people would, would be looking out for themselves first. You know, they'd be like, oh, I'll go find Lyra if there's something in it for me. Yeah, well, I mean, there are some uh, good, you know, Lee Scoresby's, of course, uh, is honorable and loves Lyra and would do anything for her and kind of gives her gives his life uh, in an, uh, what unfortunately vain attempt to protect her. Um, and Serafina Pecola, you know, clearly she's not just in it for herself. No, but I think she's in it for the big picture, and she knows that Lyra's part of the big picture. That's true, but I like, don't, she, she's not necessarily in it for herself. But she's not. But the other witches are, you know, who are supposed to be, you know, hundreds of years old and really wise, and they're like all total jerks. Like, uh, yeah. Ruta Scotty. Ruta is, yeah, she's not cool. And uh, I forget, oh, uh, Judah 
Kamai Hen, the one that kills um, John. Yeah. John. So what else do we have? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the next book we're going to talk about is The Haters by Jesse Andrews, uh, released this year. And that book is about three people in their late teens or 20 years old who go to jazz camp and then decide jazz camp sucks and run away and to form a rock band Fun. and uh parts of it were very relatable <laughs> to me <laughs> is the rock band named the haters no they they what one of the running things in the book is trying to figure out what to call it um which i can tell you is difficult it's difficult to come up with a name that hasn't been used and also isn't just terrible. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to talk about something. I forgot yeah. about it until this instant. Okay. So while I was visiting you, yeah. we signed some things. We did. That's true. We totally did. Oh my God. Y'all get ready for this shit. <laughs> so one thing we signed was a copy of Awoken, the very first book that we covered in this podcast. Yeah, we did. A classic episode. A classic book. Classic book. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing we signed was uh, a DVD. Vampire Academy. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was totally Vampire Academy, which was one of the worst YA movies I've ever seen, which included some of the worst CGI I've ever seen. Yeah, that CGI was, was uh, amazingly bad. So we have these things, and we're like, well, we should have a contest or something and give them to people. Uh, and then we haven't talked at all about what that contest would be or the form it would take. Oh, man. But I was thinking that, you know, that um, for the past few episodes, I've put a song that I wrote or recorded at the end of the episode. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Whereas previously, I put a clip from the sentimental favorite song, Hey There, uh, which we should thank them because we haven't done that in a while. Thank you, sentimental favorites. But... What I was thinking is that if people want to write songs based on any of the books that we've talked about so far or anything else related to this podcast, um, you can either record your own songs or you can just write the lyrics and send them in and we will pick our favorite. And if you've just sent the lyrics, I'll come up with an arrangement and record it. Oh my God. That's like a two for present. Yeah. And maybe we'll each pick our favorite since there yeah. are two prizes and okay so my prize is gonna be awoken okay so make it good y'all yeah. i have um really shitty taste in things um and a body sense of humor so play to that yeah <laughs> you uh, may get chosen and uh <laughs> and then uh so i guess i have you get the bad one <laughs> Um, no, it's it's good. I mean, both of them are equally terrible. Yeah. in in different ways. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I have Vampire Academy, and um, I don't know how you can play towards what I'll want, but you can send it to podcast at loveyalikecrazy dot com, or you can send it to us on Facebook. If you go to the Love You Like Crazy what, uh, Facebook page, there should be a way to send us a message there. Or, you know, however else you wanted to get it to us is fine. Uh, and I don't know how long will this contest will run, probably. As long as it needs to. Yeah. I think I'll know it when I see it. Right. So, at some point, we'll say, we'll uh, release an episode where we're like, well, this is it. You have another week or whatever. And then we'll pick it, and then we'll announce it. And then we'll mail, I'll mail the things off. I like this plan. This is a good plan. I'm excited. I'm actually, like, bouncing up and down. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty excited about it, too. I really hope y'all, like, play. And I should say, like, you've heard some of the songs that I've written or recorded for this podcast. And you know that the bar is pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> you heard the song that I wrote. That song the is bar awesome. is so low. <laughs> Um, I yeah. think I, as if I were a teenage werewolf I think I did a good job <laughs> yeah a song about truffles is great Yeah, uh, it, it included the word truffle about 50 times yep so um, yeah so so start writing and send that in and uh, I look forward to reading it and, and hearing it and 
yeah so do that um and if you have anything else that you would like to send us, uh, you know, just to have us read on air or respond to on air, you can send it to that same address, podcast at loveyoulikecrazy.com. If you want to send me chocolate, um, message us there, and I will send you my address um, to get said chocolate. See, now you're talking. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. So I wanted to thank the sentimental favorites, which I guess I've already done. I also wanted to say... Um, I haven't actually asked them if we can do this yet, but hopefully they'll say yes. And if they don't, I'll just cut this out. Uh, This band in Rhode Island that um, I became acquainted with fairly recently, The Adjuncts, uh, recently released an album with the song Reread Harry Potter. It's a really fun song, and I like it, and so I I want it. It's 100% accurate. Mm -hmm. So um, assuming that they give me permission to do so, I'll play that at the end of this episode, and you can enjoy it, and then you can reread Harry Potter if you are so inclined. Oh, speaking of rereading Harry Potter, are you going to the midnight release of the new Harry Potter books? Oh, uh, I don't. Uh, no, I, I hadn't planned to. <gasps> you should. I should. You're right. So everybody knows that on, on the 31st of this month, um, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child Parts 1 and 2 are being released. Um, me and 400 of my closest 12-year-old friends are going to be at the midnight release party in my town. So I'm pretty excited about this. Um, it won't be creepy at all. Um, no, it's actually going to be me and I have a, a, a book club in town uh, where we all read, surprisingly enough, YA books. Um, and we're going to meet up to get some, some late night books. And it's really exciting because I haven't done this in so long. I remember um, many years ago when I was living in the same town as Jacob, we left a party so I could go get a Harry Potter book. And I appreciate that. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> Um, so I think that that's, that covers the things that I wanted to talk about. And some things I didn't want to talk about. I'm just rambling. I think I'm tired too. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's believable. Uh, yeah. So until next time, I love you like crazy. Aw, I love you too. I love ya too. Yeah. Reread Harry Potter before you turn 30, before you buy a house. I, should, I haven't looked. I need to look. I will look. Facebook. Facebook. What's going on on Facebook? <laughs> That's going to end up in the thing, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe.